We're going to talk about those annoying dust spots on your camera sensor and how to clean them up in Lightroom. So since moving the Nikon mirrorless, I found myself battling dust spots on my sensor much more often. Back when I was using a DSLR, it had a mirror that came down over the sensor. So during lens changes and things like that, the sensor was relatively well protected. I always took good care to make sure I was shielded from the wind and, you know, doing my lens changes in, in safe places. So I really didn't have to clean my sensors on my DSLRs very often. However, with the move to Nikon mirrorless, there's obviously no mirror inside. And on the Nikon mirrorless series cameras, save for the Z9, there's no curtain that comes over the sensor when you make a lens change. So as soon as you take the lens off, your sensor is exposed to all the elements. So despite being super careful with lens changes and always keeping my bodies, you know, with the caps on and everything like that, I find myself with dust spots on my sensor much more often. And it's becoming more and more evident in my photos. And it's something I have to pay closer attention to when I'm editing my photos is to clean up those dust spots so they're not in the image. So since that's become more of an issue for me, and I know there's a lot of Nikon photographers out there, I thought it'd be helpful to take a look at one way to clean up dust spots inside of Lightroom. So we're gonna talk a little bit about how to see those dust spots just without any special tricks, a couple tricks inside Lightroom so you can see them more easily and how to clean them up in Lightroom. This video is gonna be focused on Lightroom, but I will do a future video on cleaning them up in Photoshop as well. Today's is on Lightroom. So before I dive in on that though, if you find the content in this video helpful, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more landscape photography content like this, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything from me. It really helps me and the channel continue to grow, and I would really appreciate it. And now with that, let's take a look. So the image we're going to take a look at today is an image I captured in Dolly Sods, West Virginia. And even when I started that morning at this particular location, I noticed that my center had a little bit of dirt on it just from the back of the viewfinder. There was a hair on the, the center, and I decided I actually went ahead and cleaned it out there real quick. Well, I blew it off out there. So, you know, I popped the cap off, popped the lens off. I took a rocket blower that I carry in my pack with me, and I blew it out. And I got that initial piece of dirt off of there, and things I thought were good. But when I got home and took a look at the images, I did have more sensor dirt on the sensor than I'd realized, and it's pretty evident in this image. So that's why we've chosen this particular image to take a look at how to clean it up in Lightroom. And we're going to look at a couple different ways to do it, some of the tools included in Lightroom to help with that. So let's first, let's look at just with this base image, let's take a look and see where some of the sensor dirt is. So some of it's pretty obvious right from the get-go. It's right here. There's this dirt right up here. There's a spot up here. You can see it right there. There's a spot over here. Very easy to see with a naked eye and, and know that it needs cleaned. And if we pop over here, there's another one over here. And you do have to be careful because sometimes things look like it could be dirt. It's actually just some of the clouds. Like over here, this is actually just some clouds in the, in the view. So, you know, you may not want to clean that up. It's not sensor dirt or anything like that. And there's even some pretty terrible looking sensor dirt down here, just these streaks. Things all need cleaned up. So if I'm going to try to clean this up in Lightroom, there's a couple ways to do it. And one that you hear frequently is people saying to crank up the dehaze slider. And while that can work some, so what they'll do is they'll say crank your dehaze up to like 100. So we can see this gives, it does make some of these stick out. Those early ones I looked at, that's super obvious now, super obvious this one over here is real obvious. Um, you know, those streaks sitting right here are obvious. But there's a couple in this image that are over more of the mountains, those darker mountains that I don't think show up super great. If you zoom in, you can see them. So, and I've studied this picture enough in preparation for this video to know they're there. So like if I zoom in here, this does start to show up. You know, there's dehaze at 100. Let's kick it back to zero. It's still there, it's fainter. So yes, dehaze does bring it out some, but I still think when you're looking at the picture from fitting the screen that it's hard to see some of the sensor dirt that's down in here. So while some people like to use that dehaze option, I find that using the healing tool and its visualized, visualized spots option is much cleaner and much quicker to find the dust spots in my opinion and is a better method. So let's set my dehaze back to this. I think I originally had it probably around plus 10 or so on this image. So we're back to the normal image. I've done some of the basic edits on it. So let's dive in here and I'm going to go and let's go ahead and find a way to get these dust spots and identify them very easily instead of using a dehaze slider. So to do that, you just click your brushes. We're going to choose healing because you want to heal. It gives you nice edges, nice cleanup. And once you do that down here at the bottom of the screen, there's a visualize spots option. 
If we check that box, it turns your image into this sort of black and white image. And the dust spots start to pop up real evidently. Like here we are up here at the top. Those ones, they just stick out. They're plain as day, super clear. And if I crank this up a little bit, there's a slider and you can make it a little more pronounced. So if we bring that up a little more, I suddenly start to pull out even more dust spots. I think ones that I think the DHA slider did not make easy to, to identify would be easy to miss. If we go in here, you can see, see now we see a dust spot down here. We see a dust spot down here. We see one here. We see one down here. Even see some over here next to the trees. Now, one thing to keep in mind, you know, not all of these are dust spots. You'll tend to get a little bit of a roundness to a dust spot. I have some of these smudges up here that are pretty easily identifiable. But then there are a couple spots like this little ridge line. That's just a ridge line in the back. Doesn't need cleaned up. That's part of the image. It's just a faint ridge line. Over here, we've got a little bit of the mountainside. They got a little bit more highlights, a little bit more light. That Those aren't dust spots. That's just part of the image. So it takes a little bit to play with it. You can use the A key on your keyboard to toggle back and forth. So press A and I go back to just the normal image. So you can sort of peer in, look in there and see that, yeah, that's just some of the highlights in the mountains. Same, press A again, bring it back. This section right here, press A. That's really just highlights in the mountain that stood out a little more. It's not dust spots. Press A again, and you can sort of see what we're out to clean up. Even this little spot, like right up in here, press A. Let's zoom into that a little bit. So there's this little spot right here. What is it? Press A. Look at the picture real closely. It looks like that was probably a thicker part of a cloud passing through the valley. So not a dust spot. Up to you if you find it distracting and clean it up for other reasons, but it's not really a dust spot. Press A again, and right there is definitely a dust spot to clean up. So I find the visualized spots tool very useful to identifying your, your dust spots. I find it much more helpful than the dehaze. While dehaze seems to work really well up in the sky where it's bright and makes it very easy to get that contrastiness, when you're down in the darker parts, I don't think it's nearly as easy. And I think the visualized spots tool is, is better to do some of that cleanup with. Now, one of the reasons to spend this much time cleaning up your dust spots is while sometimes these can be missed if you're just looking at it on like Instagram or digitally on a computer, if you start printing your photos and you start printing them big, these little dust spots, even these dark areas, you'll, they'll start to become more evident and you'll see them with your eye when they come out in that printed format. So that's why it's worth, especially if an image is looking like going to go to print or something going into your portfolio, that's worth taking some of this extra time to really clean up those harder to see dust spots, pop into here to visualize spots and clean it up. So. We got the visualize spots tool up. What we're going to do is, like I said, we're going to use the healing brush and Lightroom. And we're just going to come up here. We are going to make my brush just a little bit bigger. Pop on that one. Pop on that one. Pop on that one. Pop that one. So we're just coming over here. And what this is, is a healing brush is it's finding, it's if we're choosing what we want to heal. And then Lightroom is going to go choose a little section from the image that it thinks is a good cover up for that. And it's going to mask over. So we're going to get all these in here. We're going to do one sweep. First, and then we're gonna take a quick look, check our work. I'm moving a little quick with this for the video. I'd probably be paying slightly more attention in actual use. Come up here. So what I've done, I've been going through, I got one little guy up here. He's sort of right in the ridges, so I wanna be careful where it pulls from. I think I like where Lightroom did that. So I'm gonna say done. I've got all these spots. I've clicked the heel brush over the spot I wanna cover up. Lightroom has chosen an area of the image it thinks will be a good match, and it covers it up. I moved a little quick. If I was doing this on a full on image, I would probably watch that a little closer, make sure it's choosing what I want. I would use the A key to sort of toggle back and forth. Go back into my heel tool. Let's hide all of these spots real quick. Tools overlay, we're gonna say never. So I hide all the, the work it's been doing. Press A, take a look at the image, see what I think. Come through here, look at this. I've got a little one over here that I missed over here next to this tree. So let's zoom in there and show you what that looks like. So over here next to that tree, there was, there it is up there at the top. So let's slide this guy up just a little bit. So this right here looks like a dust spot. Look at the A. And sure enough, there's just barely a dust spot there. And this is where I think the visualized tool is superior. Because let's bring that dehaze up, crank it up. It does show up, but I just feel like in quickly moving through, I would have missed that particular one. So let's bring dehaze back, bring your visualized spots up. And so we got this one. So we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to shrink my heel brush just a little bit, get right around it. Great. And then this one's a little tricky because it's right on a ridge line. Let's see what Lightroom can do with that. I like how it did with that. Uh, looks like there's a teeny little spot there. Cool. Let's go back to fit on this. So that's really how you do it. We're going to jump in here and clean these 
spots right here in the middle, these little lines. I think these are smears. Regardless, they don't look good in the image, and I think they're just smears on the sensor. So we're just gonna drag my heel tool over top of that. This is a big one, and try to get it all in one. Hit or miss, nice. And this one's a little tricky because it goes right into that ridge line. You know, Lightroom does with that. Probably spend a little bit more time on that on a real image, but that'll suffice for here. Take another look at my visualized spots. Things look pretty good. Bring it back to normal. Feeling pretty good about that. This little section up here is just a cloud in the sky. I'm gonna leave it. I think it gives it just a little bit of extra depth. And I think that image is cleaned up pretty well. So we'll just click done here. Take me back to my image and I've cleaned up the dust spots. In a future video, we will take a look how to clean up dust sensor spots in Photoshop in your images. But for this image and for several images, the Lightroom way is a quick, fast way to do it. And it's good to know about that visualize spots tool down there to help make cleaning up the spots much faster and simpler. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to hit that like button. And if you wanna see future landscape photography content from me, including tips, tricks, behind the scenes, mini gear reviews, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any landscape photography content from me in the future. And thank you for watching. Mm.